So we want to learn how to do surface integrals. So we're thinking we've got here an xyz space. We've got some surface. I'll draw a dash so you can't see it. But OK, so here's some surface. I drew this dash because it's back behind the surface. But anyway, it's basically something two-dimensional that's been bent around in, um, in three dimensions. So think about maybe a flat piece of paper, but you took it and you you shaped it into this, right? Or like the skin of a basketball, the, the rubber part of the basketball, that's, that's a surface. That's what we want to do. Now what we want to do is, um, is to take that surface and to slice it up into tiny little bits, right? So we're going to slice the surface up into tiny little bits. And then what we'll do is we'll go, we'll have some function that's defined on the surface. And uh, let's see, let's call this surface S. And we'll call a tiny little patch of surface delta sigma. This is the little Greek S. So sigma is just lowercase sigma. Stands for a little chunk of surface. We've already used lowercase s for a little, little bit of arc length. So we don't want to use S again in this case. So we're going to take our function at our location times the amount of area we have and then sum all that area up. and um, our intent is to make our partition finer and finer and finer. So this partition finer and finer and finer. And that's what we mean by a surface integral. We're summing up over an entire surface. So two sums because it's two dimensional. f of x, y, z times a tiny patch of area d sigma. So we want to learn how to do an integral like that. Now. The reason we want to do an integral like that is, is similar to the reason uh, why we wanted to do an integral on a space curve. So if we had some space curve, um, and we had some um, density along that space curve that depended on our position in space, right? Here's our curve. If we added up all over that curve density ds, so the mass per unit length times the length, that would be a little chunk of mass, dm. And we sum that, sum those chunks of mass up all on the curve, then we get the total mass, right? But we could also, um, on a space curve, we could find the moment about the xz plane, which was just to take the distance from the xz plane, which is y, and multiply it by the chunk of mass, or that would be the integral over c of y density ds, x density ds to find the moment about the yz plane, since x measures the distance from the yz plane. Um, z density ds to find the moment about the xy plane, um, and so on. We've got our, our, our second moments as well. If we're in three dimensions, you can calculate a moment of inertia about the x-axis um, by taking the distance from the x-axis squared. So moments of inertia are second moments because you always take a distance squared there. This is the square of the distance um, from the x-axis is just the square root of x, y squared plus z squared. And so uh, if you square it, then the square root comes off. So we have our particular moments mm -hmm. that we could use for calculating things. We'll want to do the same thing right, for some surface. We'll want to find what's the mass of the surface, in which case we need to integrate over the entire surface um, the density. Or if we have, or the, the mass, sorry, the little chunks of mass. Or if we have the density, which would be, since um, this is a two-dimensional object, we have the mass per unit area times a little patch of area d sigma. We're summing all those up over the surface. That's going to calculate the mass. So these are the kind of computations that we may want to do a surface integral for. Let's see. We, we would, if we want to find the moment about the xz plane, then we just go around and we take our distance from the xz plane times our density d sigma, you can see that all of these formulas just carry over directly. It's just we're integrating over a surface. The type of integral that we're doing is the same. M sub xy, distance from the xy plane is the z coordinate, so z dm. So let's see, these will tie those back to um, density mass per unit area times area would be a little chunk dm. So z density, which is mass per unit area, times a little chunk of area, and so on. So i sub x 
we would integrate over that surface. We want the moment about the x-axis. Now the distance from the x-axis is y squared plus z squared dm, right, which would be the integral over the surface of y squared plus z squared density, which could depend on x, y, and z, d sigma, and so on. So these are these are common reasons why oops not over C over surface S right. These are common reasons why we would need to do a surface integral so that we could find mass or moments. Remember the 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 first moments led to the center of mass, and the formula is the same no matter what the context is right. X bar is the moment about the y and z plane all divided by the mass y bar is the moment about the xz plane divided by the mass and z bar is the moment about the xy plane divided by the mass so say you want to find a, the center of mass of your surface then you're going to calculate those four integrals m sub yz m sub xz m sub xy and and m and then just combine them in this way to find your centroid so just wanted to point out that there's lots of computations that we could do um, let's see, this was yeah, x squared plus y squared density d sigma. Oh, x squared plus z squared, sorry. So we're finding the moment about the y axis. Moment of inertia about the z axis. And the cool thing is that the formulas are the same, it's just the type of integral that we're doing is different. So, how are we going to do an integral? over a surface anyway. Well, we can think back to what we did when we found the integral over a space curve. So, space curve, we could parameterize it, right? We get this position as a function of time for time between some starting time A and some ending time B. So, and then what we did was to integrate over that curve some function of x, y, and z ds Let's see, our position actually gives us x, our x location, our y location, and our z location as a function of time. That's what our parameterization does. So what we do is we relate that back to an integral over this flat interval, right? our time interval, from a to b. We did a one-dimensional integral from a to b of f. We've got to tie all these things back to t, but our parameterization lets us do that. We get f of x of t at y of t z of t, now this is a function of the parameter t, and then to get a little bit of arc length, we take a little bit of change in time, right, and that converts to a little change in uh, length along the curve by taking the speed, which is the length of our prime of t, dt. So we would just multiply this by um, the magnitude of our prime of t, dt. So we end up doing an integral on this on this flat region, right? But we have this conversion factor here. Which is transforming a tiny interval of time into a tiny bit of curve, and we're summing up all along that curve. So basically we relate the integral of a curve back to some familiar kind of calc one integral by using that conversion factor. In a similar manner, we're going to take some surface. So just like the space curve is in three dimensions, we have some surface in in three dimensions. We take our surface and relate it to some flat region. So we'll have a flat region. So we're going to then, in order to do the integral over the surface, we're going to relate it back to the integral over some two-dimensional flat region. We already know how to do that. So we'll have to convert our function so that it works in that in that region and then we'll have to throw in some kind of conversion factor that will take a little bit of area dA here and convert it to a little bit of area d sigma. So here's here's delta A. Be some conversion factor that will stretch or, con or contract this little patch of area here so that we get the correct value for the area delta sigma up on the surface. So just like we related the integral over a space curve, 
back to a one-dimensional integral. We'll take the integral of a surface and we'll rate it back to some kind of double integral in some planar region. So how we calculate that conversion factor depends on how we represent the surface. So that's what we'll look at next.